got to do over there. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. Good afternoon. I want to thank the committee for their work uh, and consideration of this bill. Pregnancy criminal criminalization is a widespread national problem that California must protect against. In the past two decades, at least 1,300 pregnant people have been criminally prosecuted for having miscarriages or stillbirths or self-managing an abortion. California is not exempt from this. Despite clear law that ending or losing a pregnancy is not a crime, prosecutors in this state have charged people with homicide offenses, offenses for pregnancy loss. Two examples that are very recent are the case of Chelsea Becker and Adora Perez, two California women who were recently prosecuted and imprisoned for their stillbirths. These charges were only recently dismissed or vacated and only after these women were behind bars, some in the case of months for Chelsea Becker and Adora Perez who was in prison for four years because of her pregnancy loss. To illustrate the urgent need to protect against criminalization of pregnancy outcomes, Another example comes to mind. This is the one that just happened last week in Texas. Lizelle Herrera um, ended up having a pregnancy uh, loss. She had a self-managed abortion, and she was jailed for days. Her photo and her name and her private health care healthcare information were shared widely on the internet before the prosecutors dropped the charges. Therefore, to protect people's reproductive freedom and decision-making, AB 2223 will help ensure that no one faces the same trauma as Chelsea, Adora, or Lizelle by reinforcing current state practices and protections. This bill, does, this bill does so by separating pregnancy outcomes from the state system that police, uh, that th th this bill does so by separating pregnancy outcomes from the state systems that police and criminalize. However, there's been a lot of disinformation about this bill that has been spread by the opposition. These same groups that are trying to ban abortion across this country and imprisoned people for stillbirths have manufactured a disinformation campaign using disturbing and violent imagery that is not grounded in medical science or the actual text of the bill. Opposition groups have mischaracterized the portion of the bill that stops the government from re-traumatizing grieving parents who lose a child after delivery as a result of something that happened during the pregnancy. Therefore, I want to be clear about what this bill does. This bill is specific to pregnancy and pregnancy outcomes. As it relates to perinatal death, this bill protects parents who experience extremely tragic pregnancy outcomes. As parents experience traumatic situations, they should be supported as they mourn, not criminalized. No person should have to endure prosecution as they grieve a tragic loss that has happened during their pregnancy, and this bill provides those protections. Here's a very plausible scenario. When pregnant people exhibit signs of preterm labor, they are frequently recommended to go on bed rest. Unfortunately, not everybody has access to the paid sick leave, workplace protections, or support in, in taking care of their own children It might require to go on the bed rest. If a per person experienced a preterm delivery, it could result in a stillbirth of the baby who passes away because of the prematurity. Including perinatal death as an outcome of pregnancy that should be protected from criminal punishment ensures that a prosecutor cannot argue that the person who did not go on bed rest can be prosecuted because the pregnancy-related death occurred to an infant after delivery rather than to the fetus in utero. Specifically, AB 2223 will ensure that no one in California will be prosecuted for ending a pregnancy or experiencing pregnancy loss. This bill will remove outdated provisions requiring coroners to investigate certain pregnancy losses, will clarify that the Reproductive Privacy Act prohibits criminalization of pregnancy loss and pregna pregnancy outcomes, and create a private right of action for people whose rights have been violated. I want to thank our sponsors, the ACLU of California Action, Black Women for Wellness Project, California Latinas for Reproductive Justice, If One How Lawyering, Lawyering for Reproductive Justice, NARAL, and Planned Parenthood Affiliates of California. Witnesses testifying in support are Dr. Selena Sandoval and Dr. Sarah Roberts. Thank you. Please go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair and the members of this committee for allowing me to present testimony today. My name is Dr. Selena Sandoval. I'm a board-certified OBGYN. I'm a fellow with Physicians for Reproductive Health and a member of the California Future of Abortion Council. I'm here today to, vo to voice my support for AB 2223, which seeks to ensure that people are not criminalized for their pregnancy outcomes. As a physician who provides comprehensive reproductive health care, I can attest that the criminal justice system does not belong in health care. Across the United States, we are seeing a drastic rise in hostile legislation targeting those who get pregnant with the goal of controlling their bodies and controlling their reproductive choices. On the national stage just earlier this month, a woman in Texas was arrested for murder and placed in custody on a half a million dollar bond after she allegedly disclosed to hospital staff information that led them to believe that she had self-managed an abortion. 
These charges were ultimately dropped, but only after a massive public outrage and after her medical privacy was completely invaded by her mugshot being spread across the internet. And as shocking as this is, it is not exclusive to hostile states. In fact, criminalization can and has occurred in California. As mentioned, two women in California recently, Chelsea Becker and Adora Perez, were prosecuted in prison for stillbirths. We know that those who face criminalization for their pregnancy outcomes in the United States are disproportionately black, indigenous, other people of color, immigrants, LGBTQ people, young people, and those with low income. Shamefully, the vast majority of these people are reported by their own hospital staff or their care team. The inevitable post-Roe world will create an environment in which people who can, can get pregnant will fear sharing potentially life-saving information with their health care providers due to concern for arrest. We know that perinatal loss looks different for every patient, just as pregnancy and other reproductive health care needs look different for every patient. The medical community cannot always pinpoint what, if anything, led to a specific loss. And if the medical community cannot identify the reasons for a perinatal loss, why would we expect that the justice system can? Because the symptoms of medication abortion taken orally are identical to that of spontaneous pregnancy loss, and there is no test to determine the difference, we know that people who experience early pregnancy loss are vulnerable to intrusive investigations and wrongful persecutions. We cannot allow this burden to fall on our patients. People who experience pregnancy loss are often experiencing pain, disbelief, and grief. And within this emotional toll, now they are forced to fear persecution, prosecution and distrust those who have taken oaths to care for them. This is cruel and just and traumatic. We should be focusing on getting people the medical care they need while giving them compassion and support. The American Medical Association, the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, and the American Public Health Association all oppose criminalization of pregnancy loss. The investigation or prosecution of pregnancy outcomes harms people's health, livelihood, and ability to care for their families. We must make it clear that people who can become pregnant in California will be safe and cared for. For these reasons, I urge an I vote on AB 2223. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Next witness, please. Good afternoon, chair and members. My name is Dr. Sarah Roberts. I have a doctorate in public health and I'm a professor in the Department of Obstetrics, Gynecology, and Reproductive Sciences at the University of California, San Francisco. I study the impact of abortion policies and policies related to pregnant people's use of alcohol and drugs and have published more than 90 peer-reviewed and have published more than 90 peer-reviewed articles about these topics. Public health policy should be guided by public health values and informed by the best available evidence. Criminalizing pregnancy outcomes is counter to both public health values and existing evidence. From a values perspective, criminalizing and prosecuting people for their pregnancy outcomes clearly violates core public health values of autonomy, privacy, and social justice. The evidence is clear. Government interrogations and prosecutions of people for their behavior during pregnancy or for their pregnancy outcomes harms rather than helps health. I want to tell you about research I've led on this topic over the past two decades. Beginning in the mid-2000s, I led a project in California where I interviewed pregnant and postpartum women who used alcohol and drugs about barriers to prenatal care. My research found that even though California law provides that a positive toxicology test is insufficient to establish child abuse or neglect, fear of jail or fear of having their child removed um, sorry, uh, leads uh, people to physically avoid and emotionally disengage from prenatal care. As one participant said, I didn't go while I was using because I was afraid that if they had known, CPS would have been involved and social services would have taken my baby. Another said, that whole time, that whole nine months, you're like, I cannot go to this doctor because if I do, they're gonna take my kid or put me in jail for the rest of my nine months just to take the baby when I deliver. These fears are warranted, given how often healthcare providers report birthing people who use alcohol and drugs to government authorities. Healthcare providers report about 1% of all newborns to Child Protective Services. This reporting is deeply inequitable. My research shows that like other ways in which pregnancy is criminalized, black women are four to five times more likely than white women to be reported to government authorities related to their substance use during their pregnancies, despite similar rates of use during pregnancy. I also lead a large-scale study of the impacts of 40 years of state-level pregnancy-specific alcohol and drug policies, including those that stigmatize and threaten punishment. We found that these policies contribute to thousands of babies born low birth weight or preterm each year, costing millions of dollars each year. To state it more simply, these punitive and stigmatizing policies harm rather than help the health of pregnant people and their babies. 
Public health values make it clear that limiting the threat of state retaliation for behavior during pregnancy is the right thing to do. And based on existing evidence is also important for public health. For these reasons, I urge your support of AB 2223. Thank you. Okay, thank you. We'll now go to the opposition. Yes, my name is Pastor Jack Hibbs, Calvary Chapel, Chino Hills, and thankfully represented about 3,000 people this morning that were out on the Capitol steps. And my passion is more one of experience. I'm a survivor of an abortion, December 24th, 1957. I'm very glad to be here. But in light of all of that, what I'd like to draw to your attention and maybe appeal to uh, the uh, more moral side of you, not to take away anything from what was said, uh, the fact of the matter is we're talking about a human life. We're talking about uh, this uh, legislation that if it's passed, that the perinatal, meaning that it can be defined or not defined, is very loosely open. I assume that all of you have read the bill that we're talking about, in a sense, legalizing murder because nobody can investigate, if you've read that, nobody can determine how this child died. It was mentioned a moment ago that uh, a woman could be uh, depressed or uh, confused after pregnancy, and during that time, the child is dead? Why? We need to find out why. It's not to prosecute or to bring anything against anyone, but it's the value of human life. And what my argument is, is to acknowledge the fact that we are going down a road that is not only one that could be criminal. I mean, personally, I, with my high view of life itself, that those that are supporting this bill, is su they're supporting a bill that legalizes the termination of a born child, a child that is now beyond the, the age of debate, is it life or is it a blob or is it whatever? This is a living, breathing child. And in the case where there's a stillborn, we have mitigated these things for centuries as a culture, but we're going down a path that is dangerous, and that is an affront. And again, today's display at the Capitol steps is something that all of you, I beg of you to take notice of. And I understand, Mr. Rodriguez, we live in the same, almost the same neighborhood. I understand that it's time for him to retire. Thank you for your service. But this is something that is critical. It's not going to go away no matter how it's voted upon because this is a hill for moral people to die on. And I'll leave you with this. The Bible says in Proverbs 31, defend those who have no voice and those who are destined to be crushed. That's a 3,000-year-old proverb that sounds like it was written yesterday, and I would ask you to consider that rather than bring something about that would weigh upon not only your conscience, but with all due respect, it's not your conscience I'm concerned about. It's that child that should have a right to live, and all of you are going to have that on you, and as citizens, we must hold you accountable to defend life as one who had a life defended. I'm happy, was happy, still am happy to be able to be alive and to testify before you today. I urge you, please, on behalf of the citizens of California, to oppose AB 2223. Thank you. Thank you. Next witness, please. Good afternoon. My name is Dr. Vanson Wong. I'm an OBGYN physician. I've been practicing here in Sacramento for 31 years. When I first read about this bill, I indeed uh, thought that it was about uh, preventing the prosecution of pregnant women who suffer from an innocent and heartbreaking death of their unborn child. But it was to my shock and horror, as I read the bill in more detail, a clear and gruesome intent can be um, gleaned from this. It's not the intention that we're uh, arguing with. It is what's said in the bill that is problematic, and the phrase, Perinatal death due to a pregnancy-related cause should not be investigated is problematic. First of all, as stated clearly in the bill, and I think we all agree, that most perinatal deaths are, have really no etiology. Yes, there can be some explanations for it, but the, most, the majority of these perinatal deaths are therefore um, unknown, and how can you classify it as such? The second problem is that the most obvious pregnancy-related issue is that there's a baby. So if, I'm not a legal scholar, but if it says it's a perinatal death due to a pregnancy-related cause, well, the pregnancy-related cause was that there was a baby. And let's say if 
a uh, gentleman and gets a, uh, his partner pregnant. He's unhappy that she is pregnant and causes uh, her to lose a pregnancy through an act of violence. There's a placental abruption due to uh, a massive trauma, traumatic event. Um, he will claim on the court that, hey, you guys can't prosecute me. This was a pregnancy-related cause that led me to this action because, after all, what happened uh, was related to a pregnancy. And it's really not, thank you. I'm sure you're thinking that the concerns of infanticide are paranoid and ridiculous. However, the moral acceptance of killing babies is gaining popularity, promoted most recently by Professor Peter Singer of Princeton University. He stated, of course, infant infanticide needs to be strictly legally controlled and rare, but it should not be ruled out any more than abortion. Um, the ambiguity of the bill is clear. However, a close inspection of this bill does allow for the legalization of the killing of innocent newborn children up to the age of 28 days. A yes vote is an unequivocal and complete approval of the legalized killing of a newborn baby. And with all of my heart, I oppose AB 2223 and urge you to vote no. Thank you very much. We will go to uh, witnesses here in the hearing room. You'll be able to ask, come up and give your name, your position on the bill, and, your, and an organization if you represent one. And that is all the testimony. Nothing else, nothing, nothing other than that. If you need Bert, if you need Bert. We will be doing the t this testimony. Will will encompass a total of sixty minutes total. I'm um, blended. You, you you may leave if you. Well, actually, you can stay. We may have questions for you. But once again, your name, your position on the bill, and any organization you represent, and nothing more. Allison Martinez, executive director for the California Alliance of Pregnancy Care, and we strongly oppose this bill. Thank you. Perfect.
Thank you. Thank you very much. And that will close our public testimony. We'll bring it back to the committee for questions or comments. Are there questions or comments from the committee? Any questions or comments? We have a motion by Ms. Carrillo, a second by Ms. Aguirre Curry. Ms. Waldron, do you have questions or comments? I, I just wanted to make a comment. We heard a lot of lengthy um, testimony, and um, you know the issue. A lot of the issue comes around the phrase "due to a pregnancy-related cause," and I've it's ambiguous in the bill. It's vague. It's kind of overbroad, and there may be issues when it comes to court, which it will. Um, so I've and we all know I've worked for years in the mental health space dealing with postpartum depression, in fact, which is real. Um, you know, what exactly is a pregnancy-related cause it would certainly include postpartum depression and a myriad of other pregnancy-related issues. But the way that it's so broad, it could swallow up a whole bunch of other stuff, which could be a botched abortion where a baby is born alive. What happens then? There's no investigation because currently... Um, the the law is pretty clear in California, uh, which was passed in 1995, the Health and Safety Code Section 123435, requires if a child is born alive in the course of an abortion, the child must receive the care offered a child born in a live birth. So there's no um, longer really any regulations or oversight of the abortion industry. Um, this provision regarding born alive and abortion has not been enforced. But AB 2223 is proceeding right now, as we were hearing, but it would strike out Health and Safety Code Section 123435, which would directly affect a, a child being born alive in the course of an abortion. Um, and it also, uh, you know, it, what I'm seeing is the sweeping language will open a whole different myriad of issues, removing civil and criminal liability for persons who may cause the death of infants days or weeks after birth, and basically orders law enforcement to avert their eyes and risk prosecution simply by doing their job and honoring human life. So born alive children are without question persons protected by the U.S. Constitution. And as often occurs with California legislative excesses as we've seen in the past, this will certainly be struck down as unconstitutional uh, by the U.S. Supreme Court. So we've done this before, we've seen these kind of bills before. So I urge my colleagues to not support this bill. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, anyone else? Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, we have a motion by Ms. Carrillo. We have a second by Ms. Aguirre Curry. This does enjoy a due pass recommendation. Would you like to close, Ms. Wicks? Thank you, Mr. Chair and committee members, and um, would like to also take the opportunity in my closing to respond to Ms. Waldron. And I very much appreciate you bringing this up because there's been an enormous amount of misinformation about this bill, um, which has been fact-checked by Reuters, the Sacramento Bee, AP, and PolitiFact, specifically on exactly what you are referring to. And they have determined that, much like what I read in the bill, that, that uh, um, the way that is framed is, is incorrect, actually. The bill is specific to pregnancy and pregnancy-related outcomes and does not decriminalize, quote unquote, the murder of babies in the weeks after birth. As it relates to the perinatal period mentioned in the bill language, the intent is to protect a pregnant person experience, who experiences the trauma of losing a baby after delivery as a result of the pregnancy-related issue. This bill would not prevent police from investigating a fetal death that occurred as a result of a crime committed against a pregnant person or from investigating an infant death that occurred as a result of an act or a mission that took place after delivery. AB 2223 would not prevent authorities from being able to investigate the facts of a newborn child's death, including whether the child was born living and when and how the child died. The bill would only prevent further criminal investigation of the pregnant, the pregnant person in the event that the death was determined to have a pregnancy-related cause. 
So I just want to be very clear about that. And I also want to allow my, if, if with the chair's indulgence, allow my um, witnesses to also add anything else they'd like to with regard to this specific matter, because I do think this is what has come up numerous times, and there's a lot of inaccurate information about this in the bill. Please, go ahead. Um, so AB 2223 was designed to protect parents who experienced the trauma of losing a child after delivery as a result of something that happened during their pregnancy. Um, so a medical example of this could be um, preterm premature rupture of membranes when the water around a pregnancy breaks um, prior to delivery or prior to when we want it to. Um, so this could result in a stillbirth or it could result um, in a perinatal loss after a delivery from complications such as infection or the lungs being immature. Thank you. And, and with that, um, you know, I, I, I appreciate the passion around this issue um, on, on both sides and, and understand why people feel very, um, the need to come here and, and engage in the conversation. And I admire that, um, that dialogue. I will say I come to this as a mother. I have a five-year-old and a one-year-old little girl and the world in which they are growing up in. And the debate that we're having right now on abortion in this country is one that is frightening because in California today, we have women who are being prosecuted for having miscarriages, and that is not okay, and that cannot happen in the state of California. And that is why this bill is so important. And I'm someone who has done legislation to ensure that people have more doula care and that women can qualify for IVF treatment so that they can actually plan a family when they want to plan this family. But in, on this issue, we have to stand strong and say that in California, you cannot be criminalized for having a stillbirth, for having uh, a miscarriage, for having an abortion, and I'm someone who's had a miscarriage. I've spoken about it publicly. I've had an abortion. This is a deeply personal issue. And in 2022, we have to send a message to the rest of this country that you cannot be criminalized for pregnancy-related losses in the state of California. And with that, I would respectfully ask for an I vote. Thank you very much, Ms. Wicks. The motion is due pass to appropriations. Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Wood? Aye. Wood, aye. Waldron? No. Waldron, no. Agar Curry? No. Agar Curry, aye. Arambula? Bigelow? Bigelow, no. Carrillo? Carrillo, I. Flora? No. Flora, no. Mainshine? Mays? Mays not voting? McCarty? McCarty, I. Nazarian? Rivas? Rivas, I. Rodriguez? Santiago? Calra? Five to three. So the vote is five to three. We'll leave the bill on call. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll go on to our next bill. And finally, uh, item number 24, AB 2223 by Assemblymember Wicks. Please open the roll and call the absent members. Arambula. Aye. Arambula, I. Mainshine. Mainshine, I. Nazarian. Nazarian, I. Rodriguez. Rodriguez, I. Santiago. Aye. Santiago, I. Calra. Calra, I. 11 to 3. That is 11 to 3. That bill is out as well.